Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. I got one question that was sent to me. Let me read it right quick. Uh, where is it? Okay. This is a question. Uh, you want to read this? Yeah. You want to read this? Yeah. All right. All right. It says, Shalom, Deek, Mosai, Christ, bless questions for today's class. Can you really not do anything for a sister that admitted she is in a verbally and physically abusive marriage? But when the husband is confronted, he points the finger at the sister and blames her for being the cause of his actions. Then the sister, being humble, eventually believes him and says she has to be a better wife to have a better outcome for her husband. Arguments starters are her not washing the dishes right her showing frustration towards him her not holding their baby right etc he often makes her look very small in the congregation and she has a hard time making decisions because she does not believe she is capable of making the right choices she wants to counsel with him her own husband but would rather not to avoid arguments and, be, and being called stupid for asking her questions. He is the type of man that boasts that he will not be ruled by any woman. And yes, this relationship was done through the back door, which the sister admitted and her husband denied. Is there hope in this case? And if so, how? Now, the beginning of that, look at, look at it. I thought I heard, did I hear physical abuse? Because she didn't break it down into the, what she wrote. The beginning said uh, verbally, at, she admitted, the sister admitted, verbally and physical abusive marriage. Okay, now when she wrote all that other stuff in there, I didn't hear anything about physical abuse. She said the sister said, admitted there was there is physical, physical and verbal abuse, but the brother, no. R no, no, what I'm saying is, whoever wrote this, they put physical and verbal abuse, right? Yes. But all the explanations or the detail is all verbal. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So this is why you got to, when, when, when we listen to people in counsel, because sometimes uh, some women like to add stuff in it that might not necessarily be the case. Now, cases like this, uh, these backdoor these back marriages, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard. It's there, there's, there's keep hope alive. That's what we let the officers counsel with them. Um, now the verbal, the verbal abuse is a, give me that scripture about one that slips with his mouth. I asked y'all for that earlier. And these, see that she didn't meet, she's meeting the real guy, the real nooker now, the verbal abusive guy. Now, I always said, especially your brothers that's over those scams, if, you, if the brother is beating on his wife and you got proof, the brother got to go, man. Right. He Phys got to go. Phys if there's any kind of physical, physical abuse, abuse yes. leave the house. Sister, leave. Leave. I'm going to show you why. You got the scripture? Yes, sir. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 19, verse 16. There is one that slippeth in his speech, but not from his heart. And who is he that hath not offended with his tongue? That's the many times husband and wives, y'all argue and y'all say things you should not say to each other. We've all done it. I've done it. We got to definitely repent of that. But here's the main point. Look at Proverbs 6 and verse 12. She didn't know that this brother was like this until after they got married. Read. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 12. A naughty person. A wicked man 
walketh with a froward mouth. That froward mouth is that person who is consistently verbally abusive. Okay? And like she said, he nitpicks. The, the, did you read that? Yes, sir. You're not holding a baby right. You're not doing this right. Stuff like that. That's like, I remember one sister. Remember the sister? I ain't going to say where. She said, being married to this particular brother, she said it's like he's a woman. She said he nitpicks over any, she said if, the gla- if her cup of drinking water is on the right side of the table, he will argue and ask, why is it on the left? And she said every day he comes home and nitpicks. And she said being married to him is like I'm talking to another woman. And it's really horrible, and that's what happens with these backdoor marriages. Now, the abuse, the physical abuse, verbal abuse, okay, that's one thing, but the physical I definitely uh, believe in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Y'all know what verse I'm talking about, about departing? Read that, verse 12. First Corinthians chapter, chapter 7, verse 12. Wait a minute. No, no. not 12. Uh, verse 11. Read 10 and 11. That's what I want. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. And unto the married I command... Yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Let not the wife depart from her husband. That's God's law. But watch this. But and if she depart. But and if she depart. Meaning something occurred where she had to go. Go ahead. Let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. So verse 11 is what we want. But and if she depart, meaning she left for, there's a particular reason she had to go. It's to let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. There's something going on with it. Reconciliation is possible. Now, I often, if he says, if he's hitting you in the head, in the face, wherever, if he puts his hands on you, leave. Because what happens many times in those physically abusive relationships the husband can have a, I, what they call a blackout, a blackout spell, where he gets so mad for no good reason and puts you to death out of rage for just a minute. He'll lose his mind, and then you get deaf. So the signs are there. If he's putting his hands on you, popping you upside the head, leave. Leave the house. And this is why, you know what some sisters have said? Well, I have nowhere to go. He pays all the bills. I have no job skills. Well, sis... Shame on you. You have no, how old are you? 38. You're 38 years old. You have education, no education. You have no education and no job skills. That's on you. That's so why, now you're. Some brothers did that in the first place. Say it again. That's why some brothers my, my abused them in the first place. Exactly. Because he knows you got no place to go, no place, no. And they move you far from your family, your relatives. So you ain't calling your brothers to come beat him up. He's far from your family. Now you got nobody. So now you're out here in a, in a community where you know nobody. You don't know nobody. You have no money of, of your own. You have no job skills, no education. Just shame on you. You allowed that to happen. That's why we're a proponent for education. Like, give me that scripture in Proverbs where it says, let the works of her own hands praise her. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And this is for you sisters with no skills. Now this class is coming out right at this point for you. You might find yourself in a situation. Y'all know what I want? Y'all know what I'm talking about? It's Proverbs 31 and verse 31. Right. Yes. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 31. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. You see that? Give her the fruit of her hands. Meaning what? She got skills. She could take care of herself if need be. She could take care of the family. She has skills. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Meaning she don't got to rely on her husband's reputation. Her reputation speaks volumes too. So that's, this Proverbs 31 is heavy. So this is what you women, and you brothers should look for a woman who has job skills, who has education. Sister, let me tell you what some brothers do. They look for the sister with no education, no job skills. You have to depend on them for everything. So he can say whatever he wants to you. Where you going to go? You ain't got no family out here. Nobody to depend on. You don't want to be on welfare. You don't want to be on uh, public housing. So you have to suffer under this dude. Shame on you, sis. So, so your, your camp leaders, 
any brother you got proof that hitting the sister, the brother, kick the brother out until he get his my way. Because some of you, we're not playing game with that, that domestic violence, and we're not playing no game with that. Go, get your my way, then you can come back. But kick him out. He got to go. Cap, your next question. It says, if you're over 50 and cannot have children, would you recommend still pursuing marriage? If there are no children, what's the purpose of marriage? Um, real quick, can I get 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 8? 1 Samuel 1 and 8. Because what you, the sister, it's the sister who asked that, what you may not realize is, if children are not involved in your marriage, you still have a duty of being a mother to the nation. You still have a duty. A lot of times, we, we, that's, that's actually still that self-centered or selfish spirit where it has to be about you, 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 you. There are, there's a nation of lost children. <laughs> We're all lost children in need of guidance. So if you are a sister of age, and especially if you're a seasoned sister in the truth, you have a big job to do. And it's not just about your household, but you have a nation depending on you. First Samuel 1 and 8. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Then said, said Elkanah, her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? What do we have here? We have Samuel, the prophet's parents. Right here. Initially, his mother was unable to have children. Elkanah, her husband, she was weeping because it's, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a blessing to have children of the Lord, right? So she was being vexed by other sisters that she was barren and unable to have children. But the question the sister asks is, what's the purpose of marriage if no children are involved? What this scripture shows you is that there's still love in a marriage regardless of children or not. You have the ability to live happy, healthy, marital lives with or without children. Children is the bonus. Regardless if children are involved or not, you still, as a good married couple, are still an example to an entire nation that needs to learn how marriage should be run. An example to follow. So you have the ability to be an example to a nation of people. The purpose of marriage, you are the a fruit of marriage. You're the fruit of a good and healthy marriage. So there's young brothers and young sisters. But the class is about backdoor marriage, marriages. So you have the ability to have a healthy marriage where your husband loves you, regardless of not having children. Guess what? That can help all these daggone backdoor marriages we see going on. You can be an example to the nation. So what's the purpose of marriage? You can be an example to a nation. And look at uh, Tobit 8 and 7. Tobit 8 verse 7. This is what Tobias said at the end of his prayer regarding his wife. Tobit chapter 8 verse 7. And now, O Lord... I take not this, my sister, for lust, but uprightly. Therefore, mercifully ordain that we may become aged together. Sometimes, especially as you get older, you want that companionship. You want to grow old with somebody. Somebody who could just sit on a rocking chair and talk, rub your head, rub your feet. You want that thing. If you ain't, especially if there's no children involved, you want to go on vacation, you want to travel with your significant other, go here, go and have a good time as you are ending, as the clock is ticking. Why sit around alone? You know? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm finished. All right. Uh, I'm I got to start a question crying, online. so I didn't want to start crying. I got a question online. That's from uh, YouTube. Uh, I think this comes from a sister. If a woman is being beat by her husband and she's in the truth, but he's not, and she's and she sep she separate she separate try reconcile, is she still under the law to stay married if the marriage is hopeless? No, give me that First Corinthians seven and verse fifteen. 
So she's saying she's married to a man in the world. He beats her up, right? He's not a believer. No, he's not a believer. Okay, here's the answer. 1 Corinthians 7 and 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15. But if the unbelieving depart, meaning depart the marriage, let him depart. Let him go. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. A brother or a sister or a sister or a sister is not under bondage, meaning the bondage of marriage in such cases. Read. But God hath called us to peace. God called our marriages in peace. He brought you into this truth to have a peaceful state of mind, a peaceful life. Not getting busted upside the head. That's why he said, be not unequally yoked together with non-believers. 1 Corinthians 6.14, I believe it says that. We get that? I think that was it. Is it 6.14 or 2? 2 Corinthians 6.14? Some women are gluttons for punishment. I like being beat up. It shows he loves me. You yeah, really. Those are those psychologically deranged sisters. Beat me. Beat me. Second Corinthians. <laughs> Go ahead. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? So the law is right there. It's easy. Don't be unequally yoked with non-believers. Don't. Somebody say, what is a backdoor marriage? A backdoor marriage is when we tell you not to marry, you go beyond our back and do it anyway. And then now you're, having, you're going to hell. That's called a backdoor marriage. Right. Yeah. That, like Next we read question. the law, Deuteronomy 22, yep. 28, and 29. That is the backdoor, backdoor marriage. marriage. Cap. Next question. All right. After applying Matthews 18 for an offense that God says to separate yourself from, do you also give the scripture about separating yourself from the person? Um, that doesn't make any sense because Matthews 18 is to gain your brother or your sister. So there's no scripture to tell you to separate from your brother or sister that is a believer when you apply Matthews 18. So let's get Matthews 18 and 15 real quick. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother tres shall trespass against thee. So somebody caused an offense against you. You was offended at something somebody said, somebody said behind your back, whatever the case may be. You're offended. Go ahead. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. So the first step in Matthew's 18 is to tell, go one-on-one. -on -one in private, alone to that brother or sister, alone. Don't tell the one beside you, hey, man, this brother did this to me, this one did that to me. No, 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 no. that's evil. Now you're spreading evil. That's evil right there. You go one-on-one -on -one to that brother or that sister. Go ahead. If he shall hear thee. Now, if he says, okay, I offended you, I apologize. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thou hast gained thy brother. See the point? That's the point. Matthew's 18 is about gaining your brother or your sister. Go ahead. But if he will not hear thee. However, if the brother says, no, nah, I didn't offend you. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Go ahead. Then take with thee one or two more. Now, it says take with you one or two more. When should this be done? When both parties come together. You understand? Because now you go... Oh, Sabbath day, you, you do part one of Matthew's 18. The brother said, nah, I ain't offend you. You say, okay, you're going to come back next Sabbath. But you already got your two witness on, witnesses on the phone. Hey, man, jo Jojo, Officer Jojo did this to me. What you, I need you to be a witness for me. You gave your whole spiel already. You know what you just did? That's called tampering with the witness. Witness tampering. That's what you did. Now you got some biased witnesses on your side. No, you can't do that. You're supposed to let the witnesses know when you get there. They're supposed to hear both sides simultaneously, one after the other. Not trying to tamper the witness. Go ahead. Read that again. But if he will not hear thee, uh -huh. then take with thee one or two more. And you know why you got to take with you one or two more? Because people lie. Brothers and sisters lie. That's why. Go ahead. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So now the witnesses are the proof. They're going to establish what was said, what was right, and what was wrong. The witnesses are going to, de are going to decide this case now. 
Go ahead. And if he shall neglect to hear thee, now, hear them. He still is saying, uh, no, I'm not apologizing, man. I didn't do nothing wrong. I ain't offend this brother. I don't care how many witnesses saw what, I, what he, they think I said. Go ahead. Tell it unto the church. When it says tell it to the church, it's telling it to the leadership, the judges of the church. Okay? That's the leaders of the church. Now it says go to the church. So now here's the third step. First step was just one-on-one. It didn't work. He didn't, you didn't gain your brother. Second step, still didn't work. You didn't gain the brother. Now we're in step number three. Tell it to the leadership. Now it's brought to our ears. Go ahead. But if he neglect to hear the church. Now the brother still neglects to hear the church. He still neglects to hear and apologize. Even though it's not. Now everybody's saying, you wrong. What, what are you supposed to do if you're in that situation? Take the high road. To keep unity, take the high road. But one thing we hate to do is say, hey, I apologize. I was wrong. For some reason, we hate that thing right there. Just to admit we was wrong. Or admit we, we have to see it a different way. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Now, next question. Uh, if your husband hits you, should you call the cops? What do you think? That's what I'm going to say. No, stay there, get beat. Let them put you to death. <sighs> uh, uh, when you... Because I'm going to go through this quick. By the way, I'm only on, I'm only answering a question on YouTube. I don't know anybody's on Facebook, if they ask question on Facebook. So if you guys see anything, let us know. What if someone has herpes and isn't the truth? How do he find a wife? Is there sisters in the body that have herpes too? How the hell do I know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, hey. but the, I, did, I answered it earlier. Yeah, There's there men and listening. women who have repented who have Herpes, exactly. yes. This is what you guys got to understand. I'm going to answer this question like this. There is something called confidentiality. If a brother or sister come to me, they say they have it, and you come and ask about them, I'm not going to tell you that. I'm keep telling you that. That's your job to find out. That's not my job to tell you. This is between a doctor and a client. You understand? I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you, make sure you see medical people. That's what I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you, oh, she, no. I'm not going to tell you, he got this, or she got, no. That's not our job as leaders. That's your job to find out. I'm not going to marry her. You want to marry her. You got to find out. I'm not going to marry him. You got to find out. All right? Okay, next question. All right, this next question is saying, with regards to our name change, and our transformation in this truth, where is it at? It says, is it a must to circumcise your child if he is not circumcised? Yes. yes. That is part of the covenant that our forefather Abraham had made with the Lord. Let's get that in Genesis, the 17th chapter. We'll start at verse 9. Genesis, chapter 17, yeah. verse 9. And God said unto Abraham... Thou shalt keep my covenant. So there God is telling Abraham, this covenant you must keep. Go ahead. Therefore, thou and thy seed thou after thee. Thou what? And thy seed after thee. So wait a minute. What is this going into? Generation upon generation. As long as the Israelites are generating, this covenant must be kept. Keep reading. In their generations. Uh -huh. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Uh-huh. Every man, child, among you shall be circumcised. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. So yes, to answer your question, yes. You should not have your son running around with a miniature anteater. <laughs> that is a covenant between our forefather, the children of Israel, and our Lord, okay? So brothers... If you are uncircumcised, get that thing done. Okay? Sniff, sniff, snap, snap. <laughs> All, right. All right. This one says, uh, if a wife rejects to do the law, what should be done if she says she's not going to change? All right. So 
There's two instances. You could come into the truth together. She attends the Sabbath classes with you. Or she never came to the school at all. All right, give me 1 Corinthians 7 real quick. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15. Come on. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, mm -hmm. but God hath called us to peace. Read. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? Now let's focus on verse 15. It says, if the unbelieving departs, so in this situation it says, a wife rejects to do the law, what should be done if she says she's not going to change? The scripture says, can two walk together lest they be agreed? So, if they don't want to follow the scriptures, if they want to, don't want to abide by the Sabbath days, if they want to cook in your house, they want to cook unlawful foods, they got to go. Give me um, Sirach real quick. Uh, Sirach chapter 26. And read verse 25. Thank you. Yeah, 25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Read that. Ecclesiastes. 25, 26. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 26. Uh -huh. If she go not as thou wouldest have her, cut her off from thy flesh uh -huh. and give her a bill of divorce and let her go. Now, earlier, uh, Deacon said it about two or three times. There is no time limit. We can't say give her a year. We ain't going to say give her two years. But what's eventually going to happen, if you don't cut her off, she's going to affect you. All right, read up in the verse. Uh, read verse 23. Uh, verse 23. Come on. A wicked woman abateth the courage. You see that? A wicked woman abateth the courage. If you got to continue to come home to that every day, what do you think is going to become of you? Eventually, that spirit is going to be the destruction of your own soul. Read. Make it an heavy countenance uh -huh. and a wounded heart. And a what? A wounded heart. Come on. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress maketh weak hands and feeble knees. All right, so over time, over time, all right, you know how much time it should take. That's not going to be the leadership's call. But at the end of the day, if they don't want to abide by the scriptures, you got to let them go. What are the requirements for a help meet here in IUIC? What are the requirements for a help meet? Real quick, Tobit 10 and 12. Tobit 10 and 12, and I'll expound a little more. Tobit chapter 10, verse 12. And he said to his daughter, Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law, which are now thy parents, that I may hear good report of thee. Now, this is very important. This is something that I know you're asking a question now. Many brothers, many sisters do not do, which is get a report. Get an honest report from the fathers and the mothers. According to 1 Timothy chapter 5, the elders and their wives are the mothers. You get a report from them. That's the first step. You have to be right. Get the report of that person, right? So they should be doing things like attending Titus 2, right? They should be doing things like uh, participating in fundraisers, helping in the body, how were they with their household, so on and so forth. So there's many things that you can do to find out well, who's the right help meet for you. Firstly, is getting yourself right. That's the first thing. And then getting a report of that person. Y'all understand? Make sense? It was the scripture in Tobit where um, she uh, went out and got woman's work. Chapter 2, real quick, I just want to show you this. Read that, Tobit 2.11. Tobit, chapter 2, verse 11. And my wife Anna did take women's works to do. And when she... Read had, again. And my wife Anna did take women's works to do. So when Tobit was down and out, she got women's work to help support the family. That's why I was saying job skills are very important on, for the sisters as well. Because God forbid, let's say you're the sole provider and something happens to you. 
you get injured at work, okay? Um, and let's say you work for yourself. If you're an entrepreneur, you work for, like, you brothers are truck drivers. It's going to be up to her to have to help. And if she has no job skill, how could she be a help meet? A help, help meet means help good for you. That's why another scripture says, get a woman whose mind is after your mind. A like-minded woman. That's all I was going to say. All right. Uh, does it consider backdoor marriage if you, if, if you come together, marry, and this truth? No. That's not what we're talking about. That's not backdoor marriage. You, I mean, you are really married. You come in the truth. Get a, let's explain backdoor marriage again. They obviously mm -hmm. came on like, give me that in Deuteronomy 22, 28. Backdoor marriages are, are marriages that are not up front in the open. Remember in Israel, our custom was a wedding feast. Remember Christ's first miracle was during a wedding feast where everybody knew that this man and this woman were becoming one. But now amongst black and Latinos, we have secret sexual meetings. We, what do they call it? Something friends without friends with... Friends with benefit. That's what black people call marriage. That ain't marriage. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 28. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her. Have sex with her. And they be found. They are having secret sex together. Go ahead. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver. You got to pay her father because you were having sex with his daughter without marriage. Go ahead. And she shall be his wife because he had humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. See that? That was a judgment. Even if she's a dragon, you couldn't put, put this woman away. Dang. Next question. Next question. Uh, what do you do? If you have an unbelieving, unbelieving wife, unbelieving husband, and they're not, be, they're not willing to dwell according to scriptures, we answer that already. And they won't depart or initiate a divorce. Is the woman able to divorce and eventually we married? Then we, we, yes, we read the answer. Yeah, said a, a answer brother already. or sister is not under bondage in yeah. such cases. In such cases, yeah. Captain uh, Amaziah. All right, what do you do when you're ready to prove someone? but maybe scared because of past worldly relationships. Give me Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, uh -huh. forgetting those things which are behind. So wait a minute. The scripture says forget those things which are behind. When you come into truth, you got to let all that thing go. A part of being born again is to let those worldly things that you experienced go. It says, read it again, that part again. Forgetting those things which are behind. We've all, a lot of us come in, in the truth with baggage. Some with, with uh, some been molested. Some been, you know, assault, domestic violence and things like that. But now you're a new creature in Christ. So you have to let those things go. It says forget those things. And a cap, and that's why the proving process should, uh, they should be patient. So you really get to know the person. Yeah, yes, sir. Another thing about that. If you want to prove somebody, if you're in the process of proving somebody at that, you should find out who that brother or sister is counseling with and be in direct contact with that brother or sister's counselor. That's what you should do. Also, you shouldn't be afraid to ask if the person you want to prove is giving alms. Uh-oh. Because if the, the brother or sister that you want to prove is giving alms, that means they do care about their nation. If they're not giving anything, <laughs> they could give two tams about their nation. Eh, just wanted to put that out there. Uh Captain Eddie is next. Uh, is, there, is there such a thing as a born-again virgin? No. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Uh, Captain Eddie, you go ahead. Uh. Hey, all praises. This, this question here looks like somebody that may be new with us. It says, what scripture can I give my unrepentant family 
on the wicked holidays. Okay. Um, like I said, looks like you're being new, that you're new with us. Uh, you can go to Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1, uh, concerning Christmas and this wicked holiday. Uh, you got that, Netramiah? Let's get that. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Uh huh. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Uh huh. Thus saith the Lord. Learn not the way of the heathen. So the Bible says that we as a nation of people should not learn the ways of our oppressors, the heathens, the other nations. Go ahead. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Uh Uh-huh. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Verse 3. For the customs of the people are vain. So the customs of the heathen nations are vain. What is that vain going into? Lies. God never ordained you guys to keep Christmas. He never commanded you to keep Christmas. Go ahead. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. So what do we do? What is the customs of the holidays that the heathens keep? They go into the woods and they cut down a what? A tree. Go ahead. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Uh Uh-huh. They deck it with silver and with gold. So now we know that a lot of our family members, or for those of us that are new to the truth prior to coming in, we would run down the hall, uh, uh, Walmart, and pick up different decorations and things of that nature, tinsel and uh, ornamental balls to do what? Hang it on the tree. This is all pagan worship that is, what I said? <laughs> we got the Shemaiah. But we would buy these things at Walmart and do what? Deck out the Christmas tree in the house. Go ahead. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. So now today, how do we, how do we go about making sure that that tree stands up? Okay. Now, today they have what is known as a Christmas stand, but it's common that they would actually hammer nails and the X underneath to have it what? Stand upright. Go ahead. Verse 5. They are upright as the palm tree, Uh huh. but speak not. It speaks not. Go ahead. They must needs be born. They, nu- they must needs be born is going into what? They must needs be what? Carried. Go ahead. Because they cannot go. They cannot go. Go ahead. Be not afraid of them. Don't be afraid of them. Go ahead. For they cannot do evil. Okay, so what is this going into? The Christmas tree. Okay, the worshiping of what? Pagan customs. Okay, do you understand? God, like I said, God never told us to keep Christmas. You will not find that in the Bible. Okay? Remember, when you look at Colossians 2, what does that tell you? Beware lest any man spoil you through what? Philosophies and vain deceits after the traditions of men. These are wicked pagan traditions. Okay? All uh, right. If your husband abuse you, is it true that you're supposed to forgive him? What if you keep forgiving him, but he keep doing the same thing over and over again? Please respond. You see, let me be nice. Sister, I understand that you may be getting abused. Sometimes the scripture says, if, and if she depart, let her depart. What is, is that? That ain't what it said. Yeah, is that what it said? Make, we just read it. Sister, leave. Even, e, 1 Corinthians 7, what was that? No, I want, verse 11. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. Meaning, what reconcile means you got to take time to re, he got to get himself right. If you're leaving the house because he's busting you upside the head, and let's say he's in the truth. And you, allegedly he's in the truth. He's sitting in here. And you are too. I would not suggest going right back to him right away. You have to see a substantial change in his attitude, in his conversation, in his behavior. You got to see it. You got to start all over. Let's, hey, let's go out on, what do they call those type of dates? Uh, when it's two couples or double dates and all that. Because you got to start all over with this dude again. You got to see how he's going to respond to you. Because if he keeps doing the same thing, he'll put you to death. And that's shame on you if you're that simple. You can forgive anybody, but don't forget. Don't be stupid. All right, next question. Um, What if a brother or a sister proving found out they are related? What the hell? Damn the devil. Damn. Damn. (laughs) With... (laughs) which can be traced to their fathers or their mother. Uh, How do you handle that? Well, uh, give me Proverbs 16 and 20. Um, 
Yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's unfortunate. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 20. Come on. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. All right, all right. So take your time. Take a step back. You could have been emotionally involved with this, uh, with your sister or your, or your brother. Um, so don't overreact. Okay. Now I'll go to Leviticus 18. Okay. All right. Uh, reverse. Reverse 9. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 9. Mm -hmm. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. So just like Abner said, so you got to cut it off. You got to cut it off. The reason for marriage is, is, to, is to come together so she can be a help me so y'all can bear children. Then that can't happen according to Leviticus 18 and 9. So you got to cut it off. But handle it wisely, though. Uh, could you share a list of books and movies that expound on historical events and scriptures to reference that book or movie? All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. A few, a few books, uh, American Holocaust, uh, Before the Mayflower, Our Living Bible, Black Indians, um, movies, End of Poverty, Goodbye Uncle Tom, Ma'afa 21, anything else? I know Bishop is the book guru. Anything you want to add? Okay. Th those, are, those are some good startup books. Okay, those are good startup books. And all of them go into our history, on the, uh, especially before the Mayflower, how we were baptized on ships. We, were, we couldn't touch on the new land until we were Christianized. Um, American Holocaust, how many natives were killed, the, the, the savagery of the conquistadors. Real, real, a lot of good history in those books. Brainwashed by Tom Burrell. Hey, uh, yeah. I, went, I went to Facebook. There is no question. Everybody on Facebook is very righteous. So, so I'm, back, I'm back now. And, uh, I got you, one on YouTube. Dude. I'm back on YouTube. Okay. Uh, uh, let's get another question from YouTube because people on YouTube got questions. So we're going to take some questions. Captain Amazar, go ahead. What well, I'm looking for. All right. Uh, in Revelation 9 and 7 through 10, are the descriptions of the locusts literal or is it a spiritual description? That's a description of war. Or praises. Okay. Uh, question. And regarding to our name change, do we need to get to get a change on all documentation? If we have several financial account, visa, business, structure, are really Yes, you have to change everything. Everything. And keep you gotta keep a copy of the what is it called? A court uh Yes, in your wallet or in your purse. Yeah, keep it with you. you gotta Why? change everything. Uh Question, can the people in those backdoor marriage stop badgering single people with, with so when uh, you're going to get married, please fall back. <laughs> I think D said it wrong. The question is, can people with, can, can the people in the backdoor marriages stop questioning the single people, when are you getting married? Right? That's what it said. Yeah, so, so, so the backdoor marriage people are questioning the single people, hey, when you going to get married like me? So to have a horrible and miserable marriage like them. Okay, yeah, yeah. Slow down and don't... Listen, backdoor marriage, brothers and sisters, stop trying to counsel people. What is IUIC's opinion on arranged marriages? That's a beautiful question right there. Um, how can I say it? We fully agree with the arranged marriage. Um, if you look at it, it is scriptural. Um, it was a custom that we did give our daughters away. Um, as a matter of fact, let's get that in Matthews. Let's show that. Matthews chapter 1. And let's look at verse 18, because there's a key word in there. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, uh -huh. when as his mother... Mary was a spouse to Joseph. Read that part again. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph. So what's taking place right here? Mary was promised to Joseph. Okay, today what do they call that? Uh, engaged engagement. Okay, an engagement. A promise was made. Mary's father had arranged with Joseph's father that these two would become one flesh. Read on. 
And Mary was a spouse of Joseph before they came together. Before they came together. What is that going into? The consummation. How do you say it? Dang, I, what's the word for it? Consummation of the marriage. The marriage chamber, the wedding feast, so on and so forth, okay? These were the customs that we kept. Now today, hey, you don't see no backdoor marriages, okay? That, 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 that's not our thing. That's what the other nations do. Go ahead. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man. So it said Joseph, her husband, being a just man. What does that mean? He kept God's laws. Go ahead. And not willing to make her a public example. Why? Because what would this look like? That what? They jumped the gun. And that Mary was a, well, she was a hoe, pretty much. They went before what the Most High had ordained for them to have set up. Okay, go ahead. Was minded to put before her Before the away. wedding feast. I'm sorry, go ahead. Was minded to put her away privily. Why? Because they jumped the gun before the wedding feast and he didn't want to make her a public example before the nation of Israel. So in saying that, in short, Lord's will, we will get back to that point. Okay? I, I, Lord's will, I mean, you have brothers amongst you in the nation where you see the qualities. You know his father. You know the family. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Cap. Ezekiel. Go ahead. <laughs> Ezekiel 48. This is a question for you, Bishop. Ezekiel 48, is he speaking about a future prophecy concerning Dan? No. It was future at the time, but it's not future for today. Ezekiel 48th chapter, when you go to it, ah, oh boy. Remember what captivity was Ezekiel in? The Babylonian captivity. He's talking about the rebuilding of the temple. Okay, what happened after Babylonian captivity? The temple was rebuilt during the Persian Mede captivity under Zerubbabel, Joshua, Nehemiah, Ezra. That's what it's talking about. Bishop, please explain uh, why Simeon isn't mentioned in Deuteronomy 33, but all the other tribes are. The number one answer this question already to answer. Yeah, why? Because God didn't want it to. <laughs> See how easy that was? <laughs> Uh, my, my, my <laughs> All right. Uh, Exodus 20 and 3 says, Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Uh, does this stand for clothes as well? Uh, there are clothes and shoes that are made after the influence of other gods. Uh, give me Joshua 23 real quick in verse 7. Joshua 23 and 7. Joshua chapter 23, verse 7. Mm -hmm. That ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, uh -huh. nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves, yourselves unto them. Right. So, yeah, when it comes to the other nations, don't, don't show any signs of evil. First Thessalonians 5 and 22. All right, if our God is the God of Israel, why would we wear articles of clothing with other gods? I mean, I would not try to profess that if I'm professing godliness. Read what you got. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Uh -huh. Abstain from all appearance of evil. All right, abstain from all appearances of evil. So, no. What are the consequences for backdoor marriage and the... Um, and also, too, you have to remember, we have to depend on the nations for the want of all things. So now you have these big food processing plants that provide our food. Do you know if they're over there sacrificing to other gods while they give us our meat, our chicken, so on and so forth? Listen, at the end of the day, we have to depend on them. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes in their factories, in their, uh, what do you call that? Warehouses, things of that nature. No, do not have Caesar Borgia, things of that nature on your clothing, but it goes even deeper than that. Y'all understand? It does. What is the consequences for backdoor marriages and the congregation? If there is a divorce or separation, is there any possibility of remarried? Me, it's case by case, and everybody got to go. Captain Shemaya. Uh, at what point is in the proving process do you discuss sex and money? 
Well, I would say if you've been courting for six months to a year, that's a good, and, and both of y'all are getting serious, that's a good time. When they say Merry Christmas, what is the meaning of Merry? Merry, they happy they sold you. Let's go to Revelation 11, 11 and 11 real quick. That's, that's <laughs> Revel they sold you behind, and now you're, you was uh, uh, conquered as the Moors, and they turned you into so Swat de Pete. All right, now you sell Santa's uh, slave, giving out gifts. Go ahead. You want me to get verse 10, Kyle? Yeah, verse 10. That's what I meant, verse 10. Revelation chapter 11, verse 10. This is all historical, y'all. Go ahead. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. So the other nations have rejoiced over us. They put us in slavery, captivity. The whole slavery was a world economy. Everybody got rich off of us, off of our backs, our labor. Go ahead. And make merry. And they make merry, selling us one to each other. And shall send gifts one to another. There it goes right there. We were sold in slavery. We were sold, we were sold on the plantations on Christmas, Black Friday. Go ahead. Because these two prophets, Southern Kingdom, Northern Kingdom, tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And that was in the Dark Ages. Go ahead. Go ahead, Deke. Uh, Bishop, please explain. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, okay, question. Mm, this question right here is, uh, okay, does Roman chapter 2, 14, 15, Parallel with Jeremiah 31, 31, and Hebrew 8 and 8 to 10 verse. It read, the law was written in their heart, so the Gentiles in Romans 2, 14, 15, Israelites. It's Ro this Ro Roman chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, is it parallel with Jer Jeremiah 31, 31? In Hebrew, 8 and 8, 8, 8 and 8 to 10. I'm looking at Jeremiah 31. Yes, yes, in Hebrews 8, yes. Yes, yep. yes, yes. Move on, area. So question from the sister side. For the baby girls that are born and raised in the truth, is it righteous to require a form of dowry for your daughters when it is time for them to marry? Bishop? That's the scripture on, uh, an look up the scripture on inheritance. If a daughter come into a marriage with an inheritance, look, look that up. It's, I thought it was Sirach, but find me that. I should say a wise daughter does something. Sirach 22.4 says, A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband, but she that liveth this only is her father's heaviness. So the first part of what we want. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. Because when marriages were arranged during the time, back in the day, in the scriptures I'm talking about, there was something that came from both sides of the family for the marriage. Okay, we've, lo we've really fallen a long way. We've come a long way. We've got to get back to that point again. Oh, and this is why Amalek, so-called Jews, what they do when people get married, they raise money for, uh, for, the, for the, uh, the marriage, for the couple. They give them, like everybody has an envelope. When I was at work, uh, I went to one of these so-called Jewish weddings. At, this is when I was working. And they, everybody had an, was giving them envelopes. You know where everybody get an envelope in a wedding? Their envelopes had to be no less than $500 per envelope. That was the minimum. They said the guy, the Edomite that brought me there, he said, no, no, you, if anything less than 500, you're scorned. You're scorned. So he said this will be help to kickstart them off to like home, whatever, car, whatever they need. Hey, we should do that here. Yeah. If you cannot, if you come to the wedding feast, you don't have $500 envelope, stay you behind out the door. <laughs> this home will be clean. <laughs> uh... Cap, go ahead. All right. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 7. It says, What does it mean? Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. Read that. Read that. That's good. That's good. Genesis chapter 24 and verse 
53. And the servant brought forth jewels and silver, jewels of gold and raiment, and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. Well, it wasn't, she wasn't free. You had, to, you had to pay some money. You want my daughter? What you got? <laughs> All right, read that, uh, Nietzsche. Second Thessalonians 2 7. Second. Excuse me. It says, uh, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. What does this mean? Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. Mm hmm. For the mystery of iniquity, iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Read verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, mm -hmm. whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. All right. So who was ruling during the time of Paul, brothers? The Romans were ruling. All right. So when it says doth already work, that's referring to the Romans. And according to, read that, Malachi chapter 1, verse 4. Read one first. We'll read down to show who the wicked are. Just another precept to back it up. Malachi chapter 1, verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall... Call them the border of wickedness. And they should call them the border of wickedness. All right? That's referring to the Edomites, Idumeans, but right here in this time, in Paul's time, it's the Romans. All right? All right. How do you tell a brother you've been proven for a year you have STDs? Oh, boy. Yeah. Hey, there's no easy way to do it. That's why we say go... Well, obviously, he or, or that's a she. That's a she. Uh, that's so how do you tell a brother? Yeah, that's a she. Yeah, so hey, you just got to tell him. Because he's going to find out anyway when you go to take your, uh, the blood test. He got he to gotta look at it and then let him make his decision. How about you do this? How about start off with a conversation about would you be able to put up with someone who had or has an STD. See what his response is, and go from there. That's all I can do. Unless y'all got an easier way. Okay. Knowing that you are supposed to go to your Lord for a question, what if the answer is, I don't know, and most times forget to answer regarding scriptures? Well, in other words, what she's saying is, what if you go to your husband for... She knows you're supposed to go to your Lord, to your husband, to answer a question about scriptures. But she said, majority of the time, the husband say he don't know, or he forgot to answer regarding scriptures. Okay. Just like on the street. When we well, are teaching, let's say somebody asks a question and you don't know. Say, so, hey, anybody know the answer to this question? You at counsel. If he don't know the answer, say, so I don't have it right now, I'll get back to you. And call up leadership. What is the answer for this? And then he gives an answer. Is that what she was asking? That's what she was asking. All right. Let me, let me read one more. If, if, if a sister interests in a brother, is it okay to ask about the brother? Or is it a desperate act coming from, from the sister? Is that, is that, it, is, is that mean she's desperate? She asked for a husband? That's not desperate. No, she asked about a brother. No. Okay, sister. Then says no. Uh, Captain Shemaya. A uh, question about Sirach 22 and 22. You can read that real quick. So there's, there's multiple parts, but. Ecclesiasticus chapter 22, verse 22. If thou hast opened thy mouth against thy friend, fear not, for there may be reconciliation, except for upbraiding or pride or disclosing of secret, secrets or a treacherous wound. For, for these things, every friend will depart. So now it tells you that it's basically talking about the way you deal in your friendship. There are things that you can say and do that can be forgiven by that friend.
but then it gives you a few on the bottom, disclosing of secrets and a treacherous wound. You can lose a friend over that. Somebody discloses something that has nothing to do with sin. They want, they're sharing something. Maybe they might have been pouring out their heart to you, a shoulder to cry on. Now, when they get to the congregation, everybody's snickering and pointing at them because they know what you just told them in secrecy and in trust. You can lose friends over that. So there can be reconciliation for a lot of things, a slip of the tongue, things of that nature. But when you start getting into disclosing secret, not, I'm going to say this again, not sins, but something someone confided in you with. Right. Like, for example, if somebody says, when I was nine, I got molested by my grandfather. Not me. I'm just saying hypothetical. That would be something you don't want everybody, you know, you don't want everybody knowing your business. How do you dis how how can you discipline your wife if she's rebellious disobedience? Of course, you ain't allowed to. Well, what hit do you mean them. by discipline? That word troubled me. I right know. There. I know. Let me read the whole thing, Bishop. This is crazy. Of course. Okay. How do you discipline your wife if she's rebellious or disobedience? Of course, you ain't supposed to hit them, which I would not do. So, what measure, action, route? Do you take to discipline a disobedient wife? What do you think is the deepest, hardest thing parable breakdown in the Bible? Okay, the first, that's the first question. The, the, the first question is what route to take to discipline a disobedient wife? He sounds like she's a kid. Yeah, that, that's what I was about to say. He's treating her like a child. Brother, she's not a kid, man. Go sit in the corner with your face to the wall. No, you don't do that. No. Yeah, you cannot do that. That's what you sound like. Next question is, what do you think is the, is the deepest, hardest thing, parable, breakdown in the Bible? Next question. Me, can I give an answer? I think it's Genesis. Chapter 1, 2, and 3 is the hardest. Okay, let's move on. Uh, who was next? Captain Amazar. The Bible tells us that our minds are continually wicked. How do you know if you really are rooted, changed in this truth when you have those types of thoughts? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 12 and 7. I'm going to go to Paul. Paul dealt with evil lusts, evil concupiscence, which means all manner of lusts. And didn't say one specific type. He said all manners of lusts. And Paul didn't have a wife. So let's go to Paul. Let's so go. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, uh -huh. there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. When you read Romans chapter 7, his, his thorn or his vice was evil concupiscence, sexual lust or sexual desires. Go ahead. Evil sexual desires. Go ahead. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, uh -huh. lest I should be exalted above measure. Uh-huh. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice. So Paul wanted this thing removed, as we all want our vices or thorns in the flesh removed. Go ahead. That it might depart from me. Uh-huh. And he said unto me. So Christ says unto Paul what? My grace is sufficient for thee. My grace is sufficient for, for thee. In other words, we got to keep battling. That's what the scripture said. We got to keep battling. He's not going to take away that thorn. Can it be suppressed? Yes. But remember, the scripture says... Satan leaves but for a season. You understand? Because guess what? If Paul now, if, if that vice or that thorn in the flesh was removed from Paul, what would our people start doing to Paul? That we would start worshiping him as if he was Christ. He would be equal on, on Christ's level. So no, you, you're stuck with that. What was, Can the, you, what was the question again? I'm sorry. The Bible tells us that our minds are continually wicked. How do you know if you really are rooted, changed in his truth when you have those types of thoughts? Okay. How do you know you're really you're rooted and changed in the truth? His Philippians two twelve. We all got that e those evil thoughts in us, yes. But how do you know that you're really rooted and being built up in this truth? Here's how you know. Philippians chapter two verse twelve. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my present only, but but now, much more in my absence. Stop right there. The way you know you're rooted is when you have those trials and temptations, those evil thoughts, we all super Israelites among each other. But how are you when we're absent from your presence? 
when there's no brother or sister with you and you're out there on your own at work, at school, wherever, how do you conduct yourself then? That's how you know. That, that will give you, every man and every woman, his and her answer. If you respond biblically to the situation, you know you're rooted. But if you give in and entertain, mm -mm, that's how you know. All right, you want us to, uh, one question is, explain Exodus 22, verse 29. Can you explain giving firstborn of their son? Shall I give, shall I give, please? Nietzsche uh, can you get there? Exodus chapter 22, verse 29. Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits and of thy liquors, the firstborn of thy sons shalt thou give unto me. All right, keep on reading. I want to connect it. Likewise. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, <coughs> thou shalt not revile the gods. Uh, which, was, which, which was told you also? Let me see something. Else. Likewise shalt thou do with thine oxen and with thy sheep. You know where they're going, right? Seven days it shall be with his dam. On the eighth day thou shalt give it me. That's not going, I know what you, you guys are thinking. That's not going and sacrificing your kids. That's not what Mosai is talking about. This is another scripture Mosai said, all the firstborn belong to me. Exodus uh, 13, I was just looking at it. 13, uh, 12, that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix, that's about the vagina, and every first thing that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the male shall be the Lord's. And verse 2 Exodus 13 says, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb, that's the matrix, openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. So we had to dedicate our children to the Lord. Remember when um, Samuel was born, they dedicated Samuel to the Lord. Okay, the next question. What are some of the books in the Bible out of order? Like the prophets and the, diff and the different chapters. In other words, he asks, uh, what books in the Bible that's out of order? There's no book that's out of order. What's, I think what he's talking about is when, when the whole thing was written, there was no numbers. There was no chapter this, chapter that. I think that's what, is, he, is that what he's referring to? Is he talking about chronological order? He's talking about chronological order. Yeah, like oh. I'll give you an example. Uh, when you look at the book of Ezra and Nehemiah and Esther, that's during the Persian Mede captivity. When you jump down to Ezekiel, Daniel, that's Babylon. Babylon preceded Persia and Media. That's what he's talking about. That's how, that's how it came. That's how they put it together. All right. Who's next? Are we a? Okay. This next question says, if, if you say you are going to do something, finish a project or fast, et cetera, and the thing is not fulfilled, is it sin? Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, and let's start at verse 5. Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Verse 6. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. That's the key word right there. If you made an oath to a brother, or in like manner, sisters, you made an oath to a sister, or even with a... Uh, the Lord will just say that. You vow to vow, the Most High is going to require that thing. In like manner with your brother or sister, if you made a vow to them, you are to fulfill that vow. Okay? Keep reading on verse 6 real quick. Read 6 again. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. So it says, suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Go ahead. Neither say thou before the angel... That it was an error. Oh, 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 what I meant to tell them or what I meant to say was, no, you got to fulfill that vow. It is sin. Uh, hey, that's why Christ said not to make a, a what did he say? Do you, did he use the word oath or vow? Remember Matthew. He said, because you can't make uh, one hair on your head black or white and you can't change your stature. Who knows what I'm talking about? Oh, he says swear now. Well, it goes into that too. Swearing, vowing, making a vow. That's what it's going into. Uh, are, you, are you, Deacon, personally willing to counsel a sister? No, thank you. I'm good. 
and how can I get to you? No, thank you. I'm good. Sisters, you should be counseling with the <laughs> senior <United> sisters. <laughs> when can we start proving age? The age is 20. The age to prove is 20. Uh, oh, there's, this, there's a, somebody have a question for you, Bishop. Bishop, is it right for a married woman to be living with her stepdad if there is no problem in the marriage? No, that's what Matthew uh, was at 19, what Christ said. Uh, read that for me, where he said, man shall leave his mother and father. It doesn't say leave mother and father and cleave unto your stepfather. Matthew chapter 19, verse 5. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. That's it right there. Man leave father and mother cleave to his wife. Not cleave to the stepfather. That's it. Hey, Deacon. I don't know if you see what I'm looking at on the comments here. Let me just look at this. Where you at? It says on the YouTube, it says, what do you do if you're a teenager in the truth and an older brother that's three times your age is giving you attention like he wants you and he keeps that's trying to flirt with you? Yes. That's a pedophile. Yeah, I, told, I told him I would fast, quick. Bishop, that's a question so for you. In other you. words, let security know. Bishop, I got a question for you. Should you ever tell a sister or a brother that you are proving that you love them? No. Next. The, the, <laughs> the trial and tribulation that I am going through in this world, was I going through the same trial and tribulation in time of all? How the hell did... That's above my pay grade. <laughs> Only God knows that. Go ahead. All right. Um, if a brother has had a, let me read this correctly. If a brother's had a vasectomy before coming into the truth and can. Okay. Uh, vasectomy is when a brother has surgery that uh, makes him no longer have children. He can't impregnate a woman anymore. Okay. So if a brother has had a vasectomy. In other words, he should blank. Coming into the truth and can no longer have children, can he marry a sister within the congregation? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's going to go to um, 1 Corinthians 7.36. It's like a gun that shoot powder. Blank. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah. got to tell her. Right, right. Be honest, be honest. Uh, what else the question was? Oh, I was going to go to scripture real quick. No. You know scripture? Okay. All right, let's see. All right. Captain Shaman, why are you with? Why are you looking? Captain Shaman. There's a, because I, I was told that there's some questions on Facebook that we, we haven't been getting to Facebook. Assist. Yeah, I, I, I went to Facebook. I didn't see no question. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see some. You're on Facebook now? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. There's one that says, What's the difference between being patient, settling to, uh, Tell me, settling to be married or being too picky. Huh. So what's it's the difference the between... the same question on uh, YouTube, I think. Yes, I what's the, what's the? She really wants it answered. Yep, she really wanted it answered. <laughs> what's the difference the between being patient, settling to be married, or being too picky? <sighs> Bishop? <laughs> well, being too picky, number one, you are looking at minute things, small things, uh, uh, to, as an excuse, okay? That's when you're too picky. Uh, settling is you know the man or the woman is not uh, what God has in store for you. Uh, you know there's certain wants and needs in a marriage, and you know that this brother or sister cannot fulfill that. Settling for them would be you married them anyway. Uh, how do you become a member of IUIC? Come in, skirt, pen, pencil, Bible, back of her, keep this habit, and let us give us a chance to get to know you. That's how you become a member. Give us a chance to get to you because the scriptures say prove a friend. So 
give us a chance to get to know you, introduce yourself to the sisters, to the brothers, and we take it from there. That's all. Uh, Captain Amaziah. How do you balance building friendships without meddling in many oh, matters? Hold on, Cap, Cap, hold on, hold on, sorry. Oh. I'm a, uh, uh, I think this one might be for you, Deacon. It says, when we repent, we are considered a new creature. Why is it, why is it that a single mother with children considered discounted? <laughs> Security? It sounds like you're saying that we have to settle for anything. No, that's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. There's, let me explain. There's a difference between a sister who never have kids and a sister who have kids. There's a, there's a difference between a sister who got one kid and a sister who got three kids. We all know that. Now, you got to ask yourself. A single sister with no kids have more advantage on a sister that got kids. That's, I'm just let's be real. I'm just being honest. This the single sister who have no kids with a single sister who got one or two kids or three kids. The, a brother come and chase him. He's going to pick the sister with no kids because a lot of time brothers say, "Listen, I want a sister and I don't want her with kids. I don't want kids. I want my my own kids." I mean, I'm just being honest. Let me ask you, uh, how many single brothers in here? Put the camera on them. How many single brothers in here? Raise your hand. Okay, all these single brothers. How many of you want a wife with children already? Your sister see that? That's the answer right there. So, by me, okay, a sister with kids and a sister with not no kid, that's not the same merchandise. One of them, the value is not 100%. One of them is 100%. I'm just saying that as a joke, but it's the truth. Just be real. Some brothers don't want to have their own kids. Some brothers don't want to take an inanimate kids. That's the truth. Let's just be honest. Like the sister that was here in uh, the uh, Riverdale school. Y'all remember that sister that was here? She going to say she, she got kids, but she say, and the brother asked her, is, your, is the baby daddy still in his life? She goes, no. Mm -hmm. So her and the brother is at home one night. You hear a break, the glass break, the nigga jump through the window like James Bond, flipped, ran <laughs> uh, like a ninja. Some brothers don't want to deal with Who that. Who want to deal with that? Somebody don't want to deal with that. <laughs> That's madness. Some brothers don't, some brothers say, no, I don't want to deal with that. I want one with no kids. We understand it's not easy. It, I mean, a lot of time, a majority of sisters got kids. That's the truth. It's not easy coming in the truth with not no kids, but it's it is what it is. Some brothers want it, some brothers don't. Let's move on. Uh, Cap, you got it. Uh, no, Captain Mazar. How do you balance building friendships without meddling in many matters? First John four and one. Well, the first thing you got to do is prove a friend or try the spirit. Okay, and if that while you're trying that spirit, if that person that's a potential friend is telling you business that don't pertain to you, gossip, evil surmising, things of that nature, then you need to depart from that friend and stay separate from that friend. Okay, read that. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. So we're not to believe every spirit. Go ahead. But try the spirit. See that? We have to try the spirit. We have to try each other in this truth. Some brothers and sisters match up. Some don't, but, but either way, we still have to see each other every Sabbath, right? We're still a part of the same body, but we're not as close to other brothers or other sisters. Good. You There's see a picture? scripture in Sirach 6 and 1, and I think this also goes with the one. Remember the one you went over earlier about Matthew 18? Yeah. Some people, they, let's say some spirits, they, uh, they have a major issue. Then they want to know, once it's dealt with, whether or not they should go back and be the same way they were before. Yes. Read that, Sirach 6 and 1. Ecclesiasticus chapter 6, verse 1. Instead of a friend. Instead of a friend. Become not an enemy. Become not an enemy. Some people you meet, and you're not going to be as close as he, to he or she as others. It's, you're going to have one of those, hey, shalom, bro, shalom, sis. And that's, that's as far as your relationship goes. There's nothing wrong with that. I hope everybody understand. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. All right. 
Or for the ch- sisters got kids. That's why we suggest them let them deal with an older man who has had children or a relationship. Don't get these young boys who ha- who's virgins and all that. Don't. Mm-mm. Chip, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because there is a situation where the sister might have three kids. The sister want a younger man. Listen, young, listen. The younger man is not going to help you with those kids because the only thing in his mind is sex, 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 sex. You should get a little older brother because you want a brother that's going to help you raise these kids. AD. A brother with common sense. AD. That brother that gets with that sister that got three kids might end up hating them kids because now that's, he got to take care of them kids. It's going to drain his spirit and everybody else's yeah. spirit. Yeah. You got this sister talking about, no, I want a young man. But sister, no, you want a little older brother. A brother maybe five, six, seven years older than you. That's going to help you with these kids. Because guess what? You only have two kids. It's not about you anymore now. It's not about you anymore. It's about those kids. Because some of you don't give a damn about those kids. It's about you. No, it's not about you anymore. You are really enjoy your life. Now you want somebody to help you with those kids. Uh, Captain uh, Every Day. Yes. Okay. Hey, Deacon. I think there's a question on here. It says, Deacon Malachi, how do you keep the Sabbath as an over-the-road trucker? How do you keep the Sabbath as an over OTR, over-the-road trucker? Well, uh, I, I usually leave on Mondays or Sunday, come back home by, by Friday. Because uh, my job is different. Me, like me and Captain Erie, where we have our own truck. So that means we control what load to take, what load to not take. I control my load. If you're working for a company, chances you're not going to control that. Whatever they sent you, that's what you get. So it's a little h- harder. Because I know some companies, you got to be in the road 12 days at a time. Or they give you, you have to, you be home every other weekend. So by you having your own truck, I always told brothers, the goalies, and I know uh, Officer Azra over there, same thing, he got his own truck. A couple of us have our own truck. So we control what we put on our truck. If there's another load, we don't think we're going to make it back on home one time. We said, no, we're not taking it. But you, you don't have no choice. You can't because you work for a company. I always told brothers and sisters, the goal is one day to have you on truck. When you have you on truck, you control your own destiny. You, you don't want to make the call. You don't want to know what to take, what to not take. That's how I was able to make it every Saturday on Sabbath. One thing about that, too. There are some, not much, but some that you can't keep the Sabbath. Just you got to find them. Yeah. Oh, like, uh, oh, yes, like, you're right. Like Malachi. on the flatbed. Yeah, like we got it, some brothers who do flatbed. Ask I know, around. Yes. Solomon do flatbed. Office, Solomon here every Saturday. Saturday. Every Saturday they're here. Yeah. So it's possible. Some companies, you'll you be here every Saturday. I know Solomon here every Saturday. Uh, John, Johan? Johan. Johan here every Saturday. Uh, so some brothers, yes, there's companies you can be here every Saturday. Oh, I mean, I'm too old for flatbed. These young men, <laughs> your guys do flatbed. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yes. This question says, Shalom leadership during a sister's period are all forms of sexual interaction off limits, i.e. BJs. Yes. Get that in a Leviticus, Leviticus 18 uh, and is it 15? Where is that about? Uh, 15, 19? Uh, uh, is that it? Let's see it. Yeah. Yes. Leviticus 15 and verse 19. Leviticus chapter. Yeah, is that yeah, go ahead and read that. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 19. And if a woman have an issue, and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days, and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even. So you're unclean. You're unclean. There's, that's not the one I was looking for. Mm, it says, go not near her. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah. Uh, verse, let's see, 18, I'll 19? find it later. But anyway, our advice right now, before, to, as I'm looking for the scripture, 
Uh, don't touch her. Do not touch her. And yes, that includes BJ. Let me see. Is it 1819? Yeah, read that one. That's it. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 19. Also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. That's the part we want it right there. It says not to approach unto her. That's it. Thank you. All uh, right, Bishop, I got a question for you. Genesis 47, 29. Get Genesis 47, 29, Nishumai. Read that for Bishop. The question is, when Israel told Joseph to put his hand under his thigh, what is that going into? That's when they made an oath. They put it under the, uh, the thigh. That was a custom that Israel had. That's what that was. Any of those single brothers that raise their hands, do any of you have children? Raise your hand. So, oh, so they're going to say they're on sale then. So, <laughs> so all the brothers that's raised their so, hands. So hold on. The brother, so they have children, but they don't want sisters with children. Wow, wow, brothers. Dang. On, brother. Y'all brothers, brothers, y'all brothers got, right. y'all got, y'all got brothers looking bad right now. Hey, who got, who got, which of your brothers got more than two kids? Two or more kids. Those are those are the bargaining brothers. Those are the brothers that's bar, that's in bargains. You're in the bin. You're in the bin. <laughs> you, and you know you know those sneakers that they put the plastic strap to strap them together. They're not yeah. even in a box. They're not even in the box. They're not in a sneaker box. Just just carry them in a bin from the bin. Those are the brothers. And a, a, another sister said, honestly, most hoes cheat. Because of the size of the ship, especially if the one at home is small. Wait a minute. Wait. I didn't, read that again. I didn't get it. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm missing something. What did that, what did that sister say? Uh, no, so another sister says, not, not the one who asked about the brothers who have children. Another sister says, honestly, most hoes cheat because the size of the ship, especially if the because of the size of the ship, especially if the one at home is small. Wow, wow. <sighs> we got a lot of work to do in Israel. It's a lot of work. I just wanted to make, sh- share that statement. Damn. Well, there's a lot to say behind that, but I'm not gonna say it. This is this this uh uh Cap, 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 go ahead. All right. Uh all right, this one says, at any time, is it lawful to attend funerals during a Sabbath? All right, go to Sirach 38 real quick. Get the, uh, uh, get, the get Leviticus. Nine. Okay. Leviticus. Do, y'all, y'all, y'all do realize that people die every day of the week. And if it's a, a loved one or something like that, and they happen to pass... People died on, y'all know people died on the Sabbath. And we had to bury them on the Sabbath. Michael, you read Maccabees. We had to bury them on the Sabbath. God didn't jack us up because it was a Sabbath. I hope y'all understand that. Y'all get that? All right. 21 and 1. Uh, question. Uh, the, scripture said, the scripture said, a man shall not prophesy or pray with their head cover, being covered, but is wearing a bandada around the forehead, consider your head being covered. Yes. <sighs> These brothers, listen, you, you guys know there's a difference between hair and head, right? This is my head. This is my hair. You guys understand that, right? Because I heard, I heard people say, this sister head is not covered because she got her in the back. There's a difference. The scripture said, for your head to be covered, not your hair. You guys understand that? Uh-huh. Uh, let's move on. Captain Ashemaya. Okay, Bishop, would you, would you advise getting a name while working in law enforcement? 
changing your name? Well, I didn't mind during law enforcement, but during because of this current climate right here, uh, you could wait if you so choose. Because they may try to peg you. Like the brother, the lieutenant that uh, got terminated. Uh, I don't know if we told you, but uh, he did receive a letter from the FBI stating that IUIC is not a threat, not a domestic terrorist group, not a, uh, a hate group as alleged by the SPLC. So hopefully you take that letter and sue everybody. Okay, you know. What are the gui gu guidelines for getting to know leadership so that they can see you as their daughters and gain respect for you? Hey, you it the scriptures, remember in Proverbs 31, go back to that. That's a, a sister that wrote that. Yep. Get that scripture that's to let her work praise her and raise her up that Is that it? Yes, sir. The works praise her. It said praise her. Mm -hmm. Proverbs yeah. chapter 31, verse 31. Mm -hmm. Give her the fruit of her give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Right. Sister, your, your works will speak for you. We don't, the leadership will see you by your works. Not by fair speeches, but by works. One more, one more quickly. Can a husband communicate as a friend in the world to another sister that's in the world that he no longer than his wife? <laughs> you know, so, some of these questions is suspicious. Yeah, that's, uh, you, remember scripture that make no provision for the flesh. Yep. You keep in contact with old girlfriends in the world talking about I'm just counseling. Mm -mm. That's game. There's something else going on. Is that what the person is asking? Yep, that's exactly what he was there's asking. Someone oh, there's someone right here in, in, in Riverdale, not Atlanta. It's Riverdale. <laughs> uh, please explain her seed. You know what? No. Uh, Captain Shamar, go ahead. A sister asks, how do you trust God? when you're always worried about your husband being a whoremonger. Damn. Deacon? How do you trust God when you're always worried about your husband being a whoremonger? But I want to say this real quick. If there has been some scriptures. What, what I'm going to tell, I mean, what I'm going to say is but, but, but here's the thing. Your trust in the Lord should not be contingent upon your spouse. Mm -mm. And you read it earlier, Philippians 2 and 12. You got to work out your own salvation. So if your husband is a hormone, guess what? The Lord is going to judge him. Now you have to give account for your works. You know what Christian women, that's a, I know that's a Christian woman right there. Because growing up in a church, what Christian women would do is pray to God for a husband. But then they wouldn't use none of the biblical guidelines on looking what to look for in a man. They'd go on what the world says. And what are they looking for? The handsome face, the chiseled body, big feet, a lot of money. And now that you see he's a whoremonger, because all the signs were there, but you ignored them. Now, how can I trust God? There are some Christian women out there. Mike five. Two. All right. How do you properly correct? How do you properly correct a person you are proving they were out the spirit at one time? Give them the scriptures. That's it. Hey, sis, this is what happened. Da 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 da. Brother, this is what happened. You out the spirit? Give them the scripts. Hey, uh, what's that scripture in Genesis when I when Rebecca saw Isaac? This is for the sister to ask the question. Is your hand a head covering? Read this. Genesis chapter 24, verse 65. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. There, therefore she took a veil and covered herself. She took a veil and covered herself. When you sisters are going over scriptures and or counsel, it's, the scripture's talking about something separate than your hand. We, our foremothers had a veil or something that they covered themselves with that was just for that. Not your hand. 
Now, I'm not saying that if you're doing something quick and you cover yourself, all right, but find something to cover yourself in the end. Everybody understand? These women understand that? All right. Hey, Deke, uh, hold on one second, Deke. Good. That last question, how you properly correct a person that you are proven. If that person is already bucking at you. I'm sorry. Because if, imagine yeah. if they all sat there like this. You and know hey, how crazy Bishop, they look? Bishop, remember, we saw a video like that. Remember of another camp? When the sisters, uh, when the brothers started bringing out some prayers, they all went like this. Oh my! You remember God. that? It's the fat camp, by the way. Uh, how do you properly correct if that if that person is already offended or bucking at you when you're trying to prove that person? More than likely, that's a red flag that you might want to leave them alone because they're not going to want to listen to nothing you say. That's it. I got an interesting question. Can you become clean of spirit of men you lay down with before coming into the truth? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. She's a new creature, born again vagina. She want to know how can she, how can she go get will of all the spirit that's in that vagina? Or the, get will of all the mileage. You know how you return the mileage from a car? For go back to zero? How can you return those mileage back to zero? Yeah, you got to you got to tune up the engine, all type of stuff. But you got to rebuild the engine. Only way to cleanse all those spirits out of you is comes through. Remember, Scripture says some spirits come out, come not out, but by right. prayer right. and fasting. And this is why some sisters remain uh, celibate for at least five years before they deal with they before they get married. So that's how you get, that's how you turn back the engine. Celebrate for five years. Praying fast. That's how you rebuild the engine. I'm just throwing five years out, but there's no scripture that says five years. I just threw that. All right. Uh, who was next? Evie? Evie, go ahead. Okay, so the question came about is it against the law? Is it a sin to have sex on the Sabbath? Dang. Isaiah 58. Let's get it. Yeah. No, it's not a sin. Not a sin at all. There's no law on that. Scripture say where there is no law, there is no sin. Uh, Bishop, I have not talked to my mom in 10 years. He's answering a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said he done. He said there's no law, there's no sin. Oh, he, he, this is where they get it from. Go to Levit Leviticus 15, 16, read 16 to 18. This is where they get it from. They precept it with Isaiah 58, and but they base it here. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, his semen sperm, mm -hmm. then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the even. And every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation because it pulled out Go ahead. shall be washed with water and be unclean until the even. The woman also with whom man shall lie with, with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the even. Jump to verse 31 is the point now. Mm -hmm. Verse 31. Thus shall ye separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness that they die not in their uncleanness when they defile my tabernacle, that is among them. That's the point of this whole chapter. If you have sex and you entered the tabernacle, it didn't stipulate on the Sabbath. Right. You could have went into the tabernacle on a Wednesday, the third day, the second day, and get put to death just for defiling the tabernacle. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. There's no scripture that stipulates what day. Bishop, I have not talked to my mom in 10 years. Am I obligated to tell her she is Israel? She could send her a flyer. If it's I don't know what kind of relationship she had with her mom, so I don't want to say the wrong thing, and then they have a volatile relationship. Mail her a flyer. Ease your troubled soul. There you go. If a sister is a member for five years and want to put her bricks in the school and ask to help out, but was told they will call her. 
how long is the process to work in the kitchen or security? Five years is a long time. If a sister been in the truth for five years and the old leader of those camps is giving them a hard time to help me, something wrong with y'all. She been in one for five years. That's a long time. She want to put her bricks in, let her put her bricks in. But you know what happened in those summers, those schools? You know what happened? Some of your sisters, you got clicks going on. That's what happened. Some of you got little clicks going on. That's my, that's my friend. So that's what's going on. You want only your friend in the kitchen. You want only your friend in the kids' room. We should not have that. She been in the truth for five years. That's a long time. If she want to help, she want to let her put, bricks, her put her bricks in, let her work. Let her put her bricks in. And that's providing she's of good report. Yes. She, you, I mean, uh, if she's at good report, yes. Let her put her bricks in. Uh, Captain Shemaya. Uh, got another question here. It's, oh, man. It says, what are the guidelines for getting to know leadership so that they can see you as their daughter and gain respect for you? Right, 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 right. And also, your senior sister should have a good relationship with you way before we know anything about you. A lot of times they like to jump over the senior sisters, bypass you guys, and want to come straight and befriend us. Nah, you, you got to, same, same thing like the brothers. Brothers go through the steps. They go through their offices, things of that nature. Sisters, go through your senior sisters. Because what will happen is the report will come to us from the senior sisters. When we say, hey, you know, we want to do this or whatever. You got, you got any sisters in your, in your group that can help out? Well, yeah, I got this sister. She's a really good sister. They'll give a report of you. And that's how we become familiar with other sisters. What? I want y'all to see that y'all got Bishop Nathaniel here answering hours, questions for hours. for hours. I want that to be, I want y'all to really let that soak in. Online and in the congregation answering all your questions. All praises to the most high, man. All right, what do you do when you have children with someone who's a non-believer and you're desirous of and you're desirous of marriage, but they more than likely will mess up your efforts with a potential suitor. Well, either way, you're gonna have to go through those steps to get married. Now, if that person becomes a demon to you or not, if that person becomes a demon to you, that's gonna be your cross to bear. What you're gonna have to do is use wisdom with that, with that, that ex-spouse to the best of your ability, basically, because they're not in the truth. They're not governed by our guidelines. So you're gonna have to use wisdom. Use wisdom with that with that um, ex spouse. All right, while well, every while well, well, every year is waiting. Uh, if there is a sister proving before twenty, is is not is that acceptable? No, it's not. If the question is, if there is a sister proving before 20, is, it, is that acceptable? No, it's not. The scripture is clear about the age. If you have a bald headed, if you have, if you, if you a bald headed sister, <laughs> if, if you a bald headed sister and you put on a wig, is your head cover? Technically, God. it is, but the scriptures say, <laughs> avoid all appearance of evil. Oh, God. Every <laughs> uh, hey, yeah. save me, boy. Deacon, that's above my strength. <laughs> The question here is, I have a question. Okay. Someone just texted me. What advice would you give a single mother when proving she has three kids and a brother likes her? Wow. Well, that's a, that's a new one on earth. Well, generally, you got three kids and a brother likes you. You better make sure he really uh, likes you and 
can deal with your three children? Because we have heard stories where brothers marry sisters with kids, and the sisters report that the men hate the kids. That's what ends up happening. So that's what you want to make sure that there's a good relationship or rapport between the children and that brother. So it says, the question is, did the Lord or Lord ordain if you are to be married and who your spouse will be before he formed us in the womb? Yes. Um, and you know what's so heavy about this question right here is that goes right back to what we were explaining about the council. If Bishop gives you guys counsel or the deacons give you guys counsel and you guys renege on the council um, as far as the proving process, uh, you'll have brothers come in. And you'll have sisters come in, and instead of getting themselves together, they're ready. They, 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 their eyes, they're not focused on the laws. They're focused on what's on the other side of that room. Okay? you got to be built up. Point blank, you want to get yourself together. Okay? And also, because Deacon, remember we were speaking about this. Brothers feel that they have to rush on a sister that they're proving in fear that somebody else will get that sister. Okay? So we're going to prove that right now. The Most High has one that was already appointed from you, for you since the beginning. Let's get the book of Tobit, chapter 6, and let's start at verse 17. They know where the scripture is. They can read it on their own. Oh, okay. Let's move so, on because we got to remember some of, some of them are going to go, got to go to work in the morning. Yes, sir. Understood. Uh, I got two questions. How do you correct a man of rank? How do you correct a man of rank? Huh? Well, the scripture says we're not an elder, but that blood is not an elder. <laughs> we only got one elder in Israel. We only got one elder in IYC. That's bishop. That blood is not an elder. But remember the scripture say we the scripture say you can have respects of person. I, I can understand what the blood is saying because you know some of these brothers, especially those brothers in rank, they're very abusive. It's the truth. They're very abusive. They, they think they're untouchable. They think they can abuse the body. They can say whatever they want. They can treat the people any type of way, and the people have to take it. No. That's why we have something called complaint box. If, if you cannot get to that, to that brother, put a complaint on. And, and believe me, we're reading those complaints. I personally travel to a camp just because there was a complaint about that camp. They will tell you. I personally go and travel to that camp. Because what I found out a lot of times, some of these brothers that's over that camp, they're very abusive. And we, and we take that thing very, very serious. So put the complaint form. And I will, we will deal with that brother. Hey, D, we will deal with him. And if you're sitting there in a congregation getting abused and you know you're getting abused and other people are getting abused and you don't say nothing and you know the complaint form is there, you're an idiot. And you should get cussed the hell out because that's why the complaint form is there. So you could use it and we and the, lead, the upper leadership could come and see what's going on. All right? Because guess what? You're the children of God too. Not just him that's, that's, that's got the rank. Right? You're not there to be abused. We got abused in the world already. 1 Peter 5 and 5 says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to Ooh, another. Yeah, nah. That's the part I wanted. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So no matter how high a rank you have, you should always be humble enough to listen to brothers and sisters in the congregation. Because guess what? God might be speaking through them and to help you fix something in your spirit that you might not see. That's right. One more. If you, how do you prove a brother or sister in another camp many miles away? They're not talking about other camp outside of IUIC. They're talking about you might be here in Atlanta about the brother and sister in Chicago. Okay, this is what I'm going to say about that. Let's say you're here a brother or a sister is in Chicago or maybe Detroit. I found it very hard and I'm going to explain to you why. Let's say you decide to go visit a camp. You proving a sister on. Out of a month, out of that month, let's say you go every Saturday, out of that month, you see that sister four times. That's it. 
Yes, you got stuck on the phone, but you see that sister four times. It's very, very hard. It's very hard. Uh, some brothers did it. Some sisters did it. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes it don't. Because I know uh, there's a situation I can, I can tell you a couple of situations, but I can name you one. Uh, Officer Job from California and uh, Sister, what's her name? Adaya. Adaya? Adira? Uh, she, she, she from uh, Jacksonville camp. And they married, and they have a very successful marriage. But they ask for a lot of counsel. They do it through a lot of counsel. I remember I used to talk to her all the time about him. And I used to tell, her, tell, tell, him, tell him to come down, tell him to come down. And when I get to know the brother, he's a, he's a really, really good brother. Really good brother. I get to know him, really good officer. He's faithful, very faithful, very loyal. And they got a very successful marriage. Like I said, is it, is, can that work? Yes. We got proof that work. We got evidence that work. But, they, like I said, to a lot of counsel. Remember, you're not there. The person's not there. So there's, there's going to be some type of lack of trust situation. So to counsel up with Sumosai, that can work. I believe that can work. But I saw a situation also where it doesn't work. Where I personally tell the brother, yo, I don't think it's going to work. And it don't work. Some situation, it don't work. So I think, like Bishop said, is uh, case by case. You know, we got to take it case by case. Uh, Cap, go ahead. Captain, uh, Captain uh, Shemaya, go ahead. What are some examples of the prophets being patient in waiting for their ministry? Give you one quick one. Um, First Kings chapter 19, verse 21. Read 19 and 19. First Kings chapter 19, verse 19. Mm -hmm. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. Mm -hmm. And he was with the 12th. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. So he didn't jump and say, set me up to be a prophet. Elijah chose him in the spirit of the Lord. Jump down to verse uh, 21. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen mm -hmm. and gave unto the people and they did eat. Mm -hmm. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. So now here's what, here's what Elisha did. Elisha was a, 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 a servant unto Elisha, meaning he, whatever Elijah needed, he provided Elijah was hungry. He made sure Elijah had what he needed at all times. A part of waiting on your ministry is doing what's necessary to get the job done until it's your time to be called upon. That's what many brothers don't do. They don't wait until they're called upon. They want to jump in and say, I'm ready now. No, that's not, that's not what the prophets did. Go ahead, Bishop. Look at uh, Luke Luke. 3 and 23. Read that slow. Luke chapter 3, verse 23. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. Right there. Christ waited till he was 30. That's when his ministry started, when he was 30 years of age. Uh, somebody said this question showing people wickedness. No, they're not. You see, this is a problem with you. You think you're righteous. No. Brothers and sisters want to get right. They might do something that's not right. They want to get it right. But I got a question for Bishop, though. Bishop, if a man that has a wife watch porn every two, three days, two or three days or more, doesn't deal with that lustful spirit which has lead to serious situation in the marriage. Isn't this adultery? What does the wife do? Well, that's why in Corinth Corinthians, let's go to 1 Corinthians, chapter, is it chapter 7 or uh, 11? 
You know what I want, right? It's about the marriage. Seven. And I want the one in Peter. So read that. Seven and five. First, and I want, I'm going to look for the one in Peter. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse five. Defraud ye not one the other. Defraud ye not one the other sexually. Except it be with consent for a time. it be with consent for a time. The two of you agree for a time that not ye, to deal sexually. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. That you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Go ahead. And come together again. And come together again sexually. That Satan tempt you not for your incontinence. And that Satan tempt you not for your lack of sexual cons- constraint. So now the next one I want. I believe it's in First Peter, if I'm not mistaken. The one that says, uh, the, it wars against your soul. Mm-mm. It was, I thought it was Peter. The one that says, uh, fleshly lust. I got my... Yeah, mm, no, I thought it was... I could be wrong, but it says about fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Type in war against the soul. I'm not making this up. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. 2.11. Thank you. That's it. Read that. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, Abstain from fleshly lust, abstain, which war. Abstain from fleshly lust, which what? Which war against the soul. Which war against your soul. So fleshly lust wars. It's a spiritual battle, and yes, it is adultery. It's in adultery in the mind. Christ said, "You've already committed adultery in your mind." It's a war against your soul. So we definitely, brothers, got to overcome that, and that's why the sisters got to be. That's why it says her body is not her own. We shouldn't hear things about, he forced me to have sex. The, body, the Bible says, your body belongs to him and his body. We'll go back to 1 Corinthians where it says that. First Cor- I know it's Corinthians. I don't like the way it's pronounced. It. Chapter 7, it says, your body's not your own. Yeah. Verse 4, read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. That's the point. So when you want some, you're supposed to get some. And and when you withhold stuff, that's what opens the door to these other things. That's where a lot of adultery comes. I'm talking spiritual and physical. Because somebody says, I don't want to give you none. You use it as a weapon. You know who you is. Go ahead. Uh, There's a sister who said, Sex is work. Why is it allowed on the Sabbath? Then she said, she said it's work because his uh, legs up, twist, and turn energy. <laughs> uh, 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 Captain Amazar, go ahead, man. Damn. What is considered a good marriage, though the scriptures say there will be trouble in the flesh, I'm just going to read it real quick. Tobit 8 and 7 says, Be mercifully ordained that we be aged together. Okay? And Ecclesiastes 9 and 9 says, Live joyfully with the wife of thy bosom. If that marriage provide, that man is providing food, raiment, and duty of marriage. That is a successful marriage. All right. Uh, brother wrote, My mother wants to know if she is divorced in the world, and her and her ex-husband are both coming into the truth. Do they have an obligation to reconcile with each other before remarrying? Do they have, to, do they have an obligation to reconcile with each other before remarrying? So that's throwing me off. So are they planning to remarry? Or do they have to? Re- Is that the question? Well, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So what you did before the truth, God is putting that away, wiping that aside. So don't bring those old things into the truth now. Bishop, you actually answered the question uh, for the brother 
there was another script I was going to add to that. Uh, brother, brother online that texted me this, my wife wants to know how do, excuse me, how do she suppose to stop dwelling and bring up the past and to trust? Bishop just covered that uh, with 2 Corinthians 5. Um, what did I want? Um, can I look at Isaiah 28? What's the scripture that says his mind is that perfect peace who stayed upon him? Is that is that Isaiah? I'm sorry, 26 and 3. Let me have that. I That's see. it. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Uh huh. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Just to lamb back off of what Bishop Nathaniel said, for some of you sisters that may come in, uh, and brothers that may have come in, just like Bishop said, that have had things happen in the past. Well, remember that old saying that says that an uh, idle mind is the devil's playground. You got to have faith. This walk is about faith. So if you're applying the scriptures and that's your meditation day in and day out, those thoughts should not plague you. They won't come to you. Why? Because you understood that you're a new creature in Christ now. Just like Bishop said, old things have passed away. All right? Uh, it says, how did you handle bringing your rib into the truth and how did she deal with it? Um, first thing I did was, I'm going to answer it. <laughs> the first thing I did was I had to learn. The first thing you have to do is learn. Give me that in Psalms uh, 51. Psalm 51. Uh, let me look at it. Psalm 51. Is that 51 or 52? I got to look at it. Yeah, Psalms 51, start at verse, we could go, we skim through it, go to, start at verse 10. Psalm 51, verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, mm -hmm. and renew a right spirit within me. Mm -hmm. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Mm -hmm. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Here's the reason I read this, because... In a sense, when you first learn the truth, brothers, you have to take, actually take a moment to be selfish. You have to learn yourself and have the Lord start to deal with you first. Here's what, this is what uh, David is saying from verse 6 down. He's asking the Lord to clean him up, purge him of uh, all his impurities, all his wickedness, all of his sins, right? And read verse uh, 13 now. Verse 13. Then will I teach transgressors transgressors thy ways. Now, there's, there's nothing wrong with as you learn, you also teach your wife. There's nothing wrong with that. But you have to know there's a, there's a, at a point you have to work on yourself. And the best time to do that is when you first come in because you have to make sure what you're learning and going to relate to her is actually sound. If you wishy-washy as hell, you, listen, perfect example, you're still smoking weed, but you're telling her she's in sin for being in pants. What the hell? So this is the point I'm making. You have to fix yourself. Pay more attention to yourself than you even are to her at that time. Especially when you first, this, I'm talking about when you first come in. When you first come in, you're working on yourself. So I didn't, I don't think I told her for like the first two months while I was watching videos. She just saw me pacing back and forth in the house. Like, what the hell's wrong with this guy? Just pacing in the dark. I couldn't sleep. I was watching videos all day long. But that's the process. You work on yourself, then you can start showing her, like, listen, I've changed this. I've changed that. Here's, this is, we have to start walking together now because now you're being an example to her. You're giving her something to follow. If you still pitch and crack on a corner and you're trying to teach somebody the Bible, they're going to laugh at you because you're a daggone hypocrite. So you got to fix yourself. At least start working on yourself. That way, she can start seeing a change in you. And she'll actually come to you and say, hey, what's going on with you? What, what, what's, what's, you know, hopefully that answer your question. I got, I got a question. <laughs> if your wife, is that a gobble? If you have gobbled up all the food to quench her fat spirit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, 
Hey, you, you, guys think, you guys think I'm making this up. I'm, I'm reading this on, on, on YouTube. If you have gobbled up all the food to quench your fat spirit, then blame you for not always seeing the cabinet max. What I got to do? <laughs> what Lava call that? Burn the fat. Hey, the scriptures, and, and this is why it goes back to what you were saying, Cap, about teaching the wife. Um, health is a big thing in the Bible. Uh, although we take it, black people, we take it as a small thing, but it's, it's really not. When you read Sirach 30, verse 25, read that for us, Nechemiah. 30, verse 25. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 25. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. Now, that's a heavy verse right there. Let me show you how deep this really is. A cheerful and... <laughs> it says, uh, a cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. What a... Now, so it said, I want you to notice the wording. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. If a brother or sister does not have a care for his meat and diet, what are the mental attributes they have opposed to cheerful and good heart? Depression. That's what kind of mindset. And this is why you hear some sisters say, I eat because I'm depressed. That's the complete opposite of what God commands us here. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. Now look at chapter 37, verse 29. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 37, verse 29. So when you see these, uh, I see women, I see a lot of kids doing that. They're sitting around eating potato chips and candy, and they're getting sick with diabetes and all kind of stuff from depression. Read that. Be not insatiable in any dainty thing. Dainty means sweet. Be not insatiable in any sweet thing. Go ahead. Nor too greedy upon meats. Nor too greedy upon meats. Go ahead. For excess of meats... Bringeth sickness. If you eat too much meat, God says, it brings sickness. You get your colon's all clog clogged up. You got to, what's that thing people do? And the water shoots up there. I forgot what it's called. And colon. What's that? Colon cleansing. Colonoscopy. That thing. That, they say you got meat backed up there for years. Some of them. And, it's, and this is what God is talking about. Read that again. For excess of meats bringeth sickness, uh -huh. and surfeiting will turn into choler. Surfeiting means excess will turn into sickness. Go ahead. By surfeiting, By excess, go ahead. Have many perish. Why? Because when you eat too much sweet, that can lead to diabetes, and excess of meat can lead to other sicknesses. Go ahead. But he that taketh, taketh heed prolongeth his life. See that? A lot of times we want to know why people die at a younger age now. All right, it says, but he that taketh heed prolongs his life. Okay. Hey, I got, I got a question. I got one more question. A sister asks, if her Lord does not like to take bath or shower, should she still have sex with him even when his penis is dirty? <laughs> oh, God. Oh. I don't know. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. See, these are questions you got to ask before you get married. Do you wash? And you know what? That's funny. Oh, it ain't too much funny. But you know people smell their best when they're courting. Oh, Bishop, I, there's a question for you. Can we deal with the nasty stinking brother <laughs> and his dirty penis? <laughs> what I'm going to say, tell him to take it back. <laughs> Sister, yeah, take, it, take, yeah, that's it. Wash it for him, like coming to America. Yes, yeah, sister, baby, take, let's it, take, a take it cheerfully. Together. Help him wash it up. Yeah. All right. I have a question. Is it? Can you clarify masturbation? As a single sister, is it? Is it coincide sin? Is it fornication? Uh, I'll just say this. this uh, what God said to Adam. He said, "It is not good that man should be alone." Christ said about adults, uh, adultery in the mind, when you look on a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery. That's the root of masturbation. Okay. Another question. What advice would you give me 
That's a sister accent. What advice would you give me if I kept turning down brothers who are interested in me due to me being worried about picking brothers who appear to be righteous but will live the truth? What advice would you give them, that sister? In other words, she keeps turning brothers down because she's scared that this brother might take her out. But wait a minute. If she's strong enough and she has a foundation, that brother won't take her out. Remember, that happened last year. Remember all that stuff last year with, um, when we was just going to the cruise, you went over that class about sisters being, being all sort of vanguards of brothers that are wavering and, and, and they, they might try to change the doctrine and things of that nature. The sister's supposed to stand strong and have that same fo that foundation in Christ. Right. You know, it's a good example of that, Cap. Remember about Esau and Jacob? Remember the history on that. When you examine uh, Isaac and Rebekah, Isaac's favorite child was Esau. Uh, uh, now I forgot to name that quick. Rebecca. Rebecca's favorite was Jacob. Jacob. And remember, she's the one that told Jacob how to get the blessing. And Jacob yep. said, I might, I'm going to get cursed. And she said, whatever curse is going to come, let it fall on me. She said, just do what I say. Why? She was well rooted in what was going on. She understood the plan of God. Uh, Isaac was looking at Esau like he's going, he's the firstborn after he heard Genesis 25, 25 and all that. He's still looking at Esau. It was the wife that said, nah, this blessing's going on Jacob. So that's an example for the women today. Yep. Uh, one more question before I go to the next captain. Sisters want to know if a class can be done concerning the challenge of a couple that's coming the truth, then married. The challenge of two people that's come in the truth before they get married, and then they're married in the truth. I don't understand the, I don't understand the question. Let's move on. Who's next? Captain Amazar? How do you deal with your wife if her thorn is submission to you? Matthew 17, 21. Matthew chapter 17. Verse no, two. no, no. Yeah, give me, I'm sorry. Give me Ephesians. Give me that instead. Ephesians 5. Give me Ephesians 5 instead. Straight to the point. Ephesians, you said chapter 5, verse 7? Verse, what is it, 22? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Hey, if she's a repentant woman, this is what she's going to follow. Go Wives, ahead. submit yourselves unto your own husbands. It's just that simple. It says, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. As unto the Lord. As unto Christ. The same way, if Christ gives us an order, we can't say, yeah, Christ, I want to do it this way. I don't really like your way. I can, can I do it later? No, we can't say that. The same way the wife can't say that to the husband because he is as Christ in that house. If he's repented, dealing righteously with her. Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Let's done with it. We're going to move fast. Uh... If two parents are divorced in the world and both are in the truth, is or oh, that's when you just said is it wise for both of them to be in the same school? Is that what you just read? No, this one say if if two parents is in the they are divorced and they come in the truth, is it wise for both both of them is in the truth? Is it wise for both of them to be in the same IUAC school? Well, the scriptures say all things pass away. Both of them are new creatures. As a matter of fact, I had a question that I had to deal with. Actually, I had to go to Bishop for that. It was about the question about the sister acts. Her and, her, her, her and the brother, they had broke up in the world, and they got kids. But now both of them is in the truth, and they want to get back together. The answer is yes, because he's saying, old oh, thing happened. So even though back in the world, she went his, her opposite way, he went opposite way. Now that they're in the truth, yes. If they want to get back together, yes, they can. Because the scriptures say, old thing pass away, Be behold, you become a new creature. Yes, the end says yes. They can be in the same congregation. Because both of them are new creatures. Both of them try to get that right. There's nothing wrong with both of them in the same congregation. Uh, Captain Erie. Uh The question here, Deacon, is how do you deal with weakness like stress and things of this world? Um... I'll speak for me, myself. I always keep in mind the verse in Ezra 9.13. It says that the Most High has chastened us less than our iniquities deserve. So with that, I understand that, hey, you know what? The job is mercy, okay? The things that we went through, 
thank God for his mercy because he didn't have to give us this liberty in, in his son, Jesus the Christ. Okay? As far as the weakness, you can go to 2 Ezra chapter 14, verse 14. It says, let go from thee mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of men, put off now the weak nature. That's also going into that carnal mind, worryation, stress. Verse 16, 15 says, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to flee from these times. So your bills, understand, that's, hey, that's, that's captivity, okay? We caused this to come upon ourselves. Now, the Most High has made a way for us to come up out of this captivity. So you should be joyous in that thing, man. Put off that weak nature. All right. If there is issues at the school, is it okay to go straight to the complaint form before going up the ladder of rank at the school? What you should do initially is go up that ladder. Now, if you are seeing nothing is being done about your particular issue with going up the ladder, you question, of course, the, the leadership who you gave the complaint to, whatever, whatever, nothing happens, Go and put it in the complaint box. Okay? Let's move on. Uh, let me refresh my question. Me and my wife are in the truth, but I work out of town. Can a man friend of my wife that's never been to my house while I was there, can she allow him to come over? Ah. <sighs> What is what is brother? What are you gonna come? Do, is he a plumber? Do, what is gonna what is gonna do? Come fix a pipe? That's one with oh, you. He go he gonna unclog pipes, all right. Come down a little pipe. There's no listen. There's no plumbing work to be done in the house. No. What is this question? Is crazy. Oh God, Captain Shima, you say you got something? Uh, yeah. Uh, what if your backdoor spouse refused to congregate anymore? How do I deal with this? Now he wants counsel. Now he wants counsel. Now you want counsel. Hey, here's your question. Go, go see the soldiers or something. Yeah, go see, go see the soldiers. One last one. I got one question for your captains. This is for your three captains. Or oh, actually, your four. Where's Barnaby? Barnaby's sleeping over there, bro. Barnaby ain't sleep. Barnaby ain't answering nothing, bro. Bro, I got a question for you, Captain. How does a brother deal? You listening, Captains? How does a brother deal with people over him having the spirit of respect of person and only giving rank to his friends? That's for your Captains. <laughs> you didn't hear it? How does a brother deal with people over him having the spirit of respect of person and only giving rank to his friends? How do you deal with somebody like that? I, I want to say this. Some t in not in every situation is that person giving rank to his friends. There are some that, you know, Christ had favorites. Christ had favorites. So if it comes up where that person gets rank, it doesn't mean, uh, what, what, what did he say? Uh, he only gives rank to his friends or respect of person. It doesn't necessarily mean respect of person just because that's someone who he's fond of or, fa or, or favors gets rank. That doesn't, that's not always the case. Then we also have dealt with the case where there were some people raising up uh, their friends, being tyrants over the body and abusing God's heritage. On the level of a brother, you might not know the inner workings of how someone got raised up. So let's not jump to conclusions and evil surmise, okay? You have to go through the proper channels. If, there's a, if you have a legitimate gripe or complaint, we just told you, go to the complaint form. If, it, if, you, if you're being led by a tyrant over your congregation, he shuts you down, doesn't want to deal with anything dealing with you, and only deals with those men who he raised up as like a, in a click form, by all means, go to the complaint form. That's what it's there for. It's for your benefit because we know there are times when there are brothers turn into friggin' tyrants over the congregation. 
So we, they, our leadership created a means to contact them, even anonymously, about gripes going on in the congregation. Hey, you know what? Sometimes brothers like to worry about the wrong things. You worry about, oh, this one got raised up before me. That one, how he got raised. I know more scriptures than him. Listen, just do the work. Concentrate on yourself because your work is going to speak for yourself. If you're really doing the work of the Lord, guess what? It's going to force whoever's over, over you to raise you up if you're doing the work. Your works are going to be seen and you're going to be known. So don't, you, you, you're worrying about the wrong thing. Hey, Cap, how long was uh, Captain Ezra an officer of 20 before he got for years? And the congregation was getting bigger and bigger. He was still officer of 20. He never complained about rank. We all assumed he had already been promoted. But we happened to ask and then we're like, no, he's only officer of 20. Over all those people? Over all those people. We said, Dak. And he continued doing the work. Rank was not an issue to him. I got a question for Bishop. The person want to know uh, Proverbs chapter 9 verse 1. Can you explain can you explain uh, wisdom? Chapter 9 verse 1 down. This is that talking about. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 1. Wisdom hath builded her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She has sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. This Proverbs 9 about wisdom, all this from chapter 8 through 9 is talking about wisdom. And it's all talking about the wisdom that's in Christ. Give me that in 1 Corinthians one twenty four. Although in chapter 9 it's using it at, in a, the feminine context. 1 Corinthians one twenty four 24 uh, tell, teaches us something. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Christ is the wisdom of God. So this whole thing is going into Christ, although is using wisdom in the terms of building a house, uh, sacrificing, uh, who is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that lacks understanding, she says to him, come, eat of my bread, drink of the wine which I have mingled. This same thing, Christ said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This whole thing is attributes of Christ. Maybe we'll do a class on this one day. Uh, I got a question. Let me look at these sisters. Uh, da, 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 da. I need a sister who got a hair up, but there is hair behind in the back. Who's who got a? Uh, any sister? Let me see. Oh, Bishop daughter. Bishop. I mean, I said Bishop. Sasai, stand up for a little bit. Turn the camera on, Sasai. Now. I listen, this is the last time I'm going to answer this question. The person asks, I'm going to read the question. How much of our hair, how much of our hair, head must be covered? I am seeing more sisters living out their head, crowned with just hair, not any scarf or hat doing Sabbath class. You, see, you guys see Sasai head? She cover her head, not her hair. You see the hair she... Sasa, stand up again. <laughs> you see the hair she got in the back? That's called hair, not her head. She, her head is covered. You see in the middle of the crown of her head is covered? That's covered. Stop, being, stop looking for evil. You know what you got? Some, some of you guys is looking for evil. Stop looking for evil. Hair is covered. There's a difference between hair and head. The Bible never said to cover your hair. The Bible said to cover your head. Hair head is covered. Stop looking for evil. That's the last time I'm going to answer this. Yes. Hair grow out of your head. And Thank by, you. And by the way, every piece of hair does not have to be covered on your, on your head because... That's a doctrine going around too. Brothers correcting sisters and sisters correcting other sisters. Oh, you cover up every piece of hair. That's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. That's, that's, that's Muslim stuff.
it's ten o'clock. It's past ten o'clock. I know some of them got to go to work. Oh, praise. Hey, so uh, let me ask the brothers. Brothers, can we do better in our marriages? Yes, sir. Sisters, can we do better? Wow, very few sisters responded. Wow. Let me ask them, sister, can we do better in our marriages? All oh, praise. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.